Libby Doyle, a free spirit who spends much of her time dancing with the butterflies in Landon Brooks Garden, has captivated Oliver Croft's heart. But after Olivia, no, sorry, after Oliver drowns, Libby also vanishes, and her parents, Walter and Maggie Doyle, are left to wonder what really happened between their daughter and the boy who lived next door. 45 years later, after Walter's death, Lily's sister, Heather, returns to her family's cottage in the English countryside in the shadows of Landonbrook Manor to sort through her parents' things. What she uncovers is a string of shocking secrets that lead her to wonder if anything Walter and Maggie told her about her childhood was true. As Heather sorts through the belongings left behind in the cottage, trying to separate truth from deceit, she has an uncomfortable reunion with her first love. Together they unravel a mystery that will change everything she thought she knew about herself and her family. Award-winning author Melanie Dobson seamlessly weaves the past and present, fluidly unraveling the decades-old mystery to reveal just how the Doyle and Croft families are entwined. Set in a charming world of thatched cottages, lush English gardens, and lovely summer evenings, this romantic historical mystery brings light to the secrets and heartaches that had divided two families for generations. It flips back and forth a lot. We go from the present to the past. Um, Libby has a type of autism, but of course, back in this day of this book, they didn't know about autism. And she never learned to read very well, but she really loved to draw. And she loved to be around the butterflies. The butterflies were like her friends. But in the beginning, Maggie meets a man and he works on a ship and of course he says he loves her and all this stuff. He'll be back for her and, and she's young and uh, he never comes back and she ends up pregnant. And so she marries the man in town who has always wanted to marry her. And uh, it's not until later that he finds out that the baby she's pregnant with is not his, which obviously causes problems in her marriage, but they keep working on it and deciding to stay together and wanting to work on their marriage. And Walter always has kind of a hard time coming to grips with it, mostly because I think he knew the man, and the man that she got pregnant by, he didn't like him. He kind of knew what he was about. But like I say, Maggie was very young, and she didn't understand, and yeah. So then, they go through their marriage. They can't. Get, they don't have another child. They try, but they can't. And then, when Libby, who has different problems, like I say, she has autism, but of course, like I say, they don't know that back then, meets the rich boy next door. And they get together, and then Libby ends up pregnant. And then, but of course, Oliver's parents don't want him with Libby because she's the hired help's daughter and of course she's kind of very different so that's not going to do for their son but then anyways I won't tell you how Oliver ends up getting killed but he does and then Libby disappears and Maggie and Walter raise her child Heather of course they don't tell the townspeople that they pass Heather off as their child and then Heather grows up and Maggie and Walter die and Heather goes back to the cottage because she's moved to the States and has a business there and um, she gets back there she meets her old love Christopher and she thought Christopher had left her for somebody else but then there's another story behind that he didn't actually leave her for somebody else he wasn't interested in anybody else who wanted to marry her well it turns out that when Heather and Christopher were together and they were gonna get married, she got pregnant. And then she thought Christopher was being unfaithful to her, so then she took off. So she has her daughter, Ella. And then she comes back to the cottage, so then. Anyway, so then there, you find out what happens to Libby as she grows up. And then Heather as she grows up. And then Ella as she grows up. 
and how they all come together in the end. I have the house to myself for a few minutes and I'm hoping today I feel well enough to do some stuff around here. Yesterday I felt horrible. So while I have some privacy and I don't get this very often and I'm doing laundry. Laundry is my third load I'll be putting in. I'll take you with me for a little bit while I have some quiet time. Because like I say, I usually never have the place to myself. It's very difficult to do any videos because I don't have any quiet time or privacy. And I had to put my hair up because I'm 53. Oh, you know what comes with 53? Hot flashes. And they are not funny. Holy smokes. Every time I get one, it usually starts in my head. I often have to stop what I'm doing because the hot flashes will start in my head and it's like this gripping heat. I swear to you, it's like this gripping heat just, oh, just presses in. That's it. It presses in on your head. It's like this pressure of heat and the heat engulfs your head, your neck, your ears, all, every place. I mean, your face and your ears and it's like this heat just, I, there's a kitty here. There's, there's a, uh, where is he? Can you see him? sniffing my pant leg. I can't see him again. There he is. And it crushes me. It actually just... Oh. I mean, there's times I just actually, like, groan right out loud because the heat hot flash comes on and the heat is so intense and it just absolutely crushes me. And it's almost like it makes my headache. Actually, I think hot flashes have actually brought on headaches for me because it's just so crushing and then it just sweeps down over your body sweeps down over your arms oh every place your whole body just it gets engulfed with this sticky hot uh, clammy sweaty feeling all over and it's keeping me awake at night I lay in bed and I can go in my room and it's cooler now at night times because it's the end of August and I'll go in my room and I get all snuggled in beneath my blankets and I'm so comfy I'll start to drift off and bang I'm awake and one of these hot flashes awake me right up and I'm so uncomfortable I can't fold clothes and hold the phone and oh static oh static snap clang bing and uh i use vinegar it's not always the best for static depending on what you're washing but uh and then i want to dust dry inside i'm awake and i'm uncomfortable and i'm tossing all the sheets off me and i can't stand it and i'm just rolled over onto my back and I can't have anything on me and I'm just dealing with it literally just dealing with this feeling that's taking over my body and you're just so uncomfortable extremely uncomfortable I, you're just clammy all over and if my arm is on my side I can't stand it it's just instant clamminess heat sweat so you lay there, now you're awake, and you deal with this, and you get through it, and you just can't do anything, you just wait for it to pass. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Trying to pick them up the basket. And then it passes and everything, and then you're cold. Oh, now you're cold, because the, the room is cool. I have a fan on. It's too cool, really, to have a fan on now. I like the noise, though, to sleep. But I have to leave it on because even if I'm cool, another hot flash is going to come along and I won't be able to stand it if I don't have the fan on because all of a sudden when the hot flashes hit, the fan is like needed. It's a lifesaver. Huh? It helps, put it that way. So this goes on all night long. <sighs> so I'm awake, I'm asleep, and I drift off to sleep. Or I start to drift off to sleep and then BAM! Just this crushing 
and when it hits, I'm just sitting there going, I, in my head, I'm thinking, it's okay, just relax, it's okay, just relax. And it's getting more and more and more and more intense. And I'm going, oh my goodness, I just, you know, I can't stand it. And, okay, I'll sit down. I got so much to do. Oh. And, uh, so then I'm so tired during the day. Because constantly all night long, I've been asleep and awake and asleep and awake and oh, just dealing. So I'm not doing hormone replacement therapy. There's too many side effects. I did buy black cohosh and pr pr primrose oil. But I, I got a pack and it cost me $30. And I, I can't afford it. And I took the box of them. And it didn't help, so I'm not going to buy another box because I just can't afford. I don't know. We'll see. I have. I need uh, this, um, what do you call them, the steering links or whatever for my car and different things. So, <sighs> anyways, so then I try to lay down during the day because I'm so tired. And it doesn't help because I go upstairs and I lay down. I get all snuggled in. I'm so tired. And I close my eyes and all of a sudden, boom, there's the intense heat just gripping my head. Just pressure of heat all through the whole head. I mean, it's the ears, the neck, the pillow. You're suddenly just like that. You're sweating on your pillow. Just boom. It's like the pillow is just so hot. I can't stand it. And you're just instantly, your neck is all sweating against your pillow. And your body just breaks out into a sweat and it's extremely uncomfortable it's I don't even know how to explain it but during the day when it hits me like I can't even stop from like just groaning out loud sometimes because it hits and I'm just like oh because the crushing feeling and sometimes you feel a little nauseous sometimes you feel a little dizzy when they hit so I haven't been sleeping <laughs> You can't sleep with this going on. You're like, I'm cold and I cover up and then I'm too hot and I'm sweating and I'm, oh my gosh. So then I joined the uh, menopause group of ladies and all talking about it. Some ladies have been going through this for multiple years. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm thinking, okay, hopefully all the hormone changes will be done. They'll you know, switch, they'll change, you know, you I'm 53, you turn 54, and your body's done going through all the hormonal changes, and then it's done and over with. Well, not according to some of these ladies. Some of these ladies have been going through this for many years, 10 years or so, and I don't know. They talk about their exhaustion. A lot of them have nausea and like I say dizziness when they come on I don't always have that sometimes I do I feel very dizzy or nauseous when they come on I uh, I often have to stop what I'm doing I just can't take it it's like it just engulfs your whole body it just takes you right over everything and I don't know but I'm in the group and which helps some you kind of like know that you're not alone going through this and like the fatigue, of course, and like so many of them are just having a horrible, terrible time trying to deal with it. And it is, it's very hard to deal with. If anybody, if you ever say hot flashes to anybody and anybody ever laughs at you for saying it or saying that you have it, you know, they have no idea, none, how, I don't know, how much they affect your life and they affect your day and they affect your sleep and they affect what you're doing and just trying to work and do stuff and then all of a sudden they hit you and it's like <laughs> it's insane and then you feel sweaty so much off and on constantly I wake up in the morning and I'm just in a shower like oh my gosh because all night long I've been going through these hot flashes and I'm changing my sheets constantly in my pillowcases constantly yeah more laundry more water bills